This is Henry from God Dethroned, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Gore Christ, Dr. Vincent West here with Henry, a fucking God dethroned. Henry, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And uh, May 5th on Metal Blade Records, you can get The World Ablaze, the first album in a while. Talk about uh, that briefly for a little bit. We'll get back to the full thing in a second, but uh, briefly talk about your, your new record. Yep. Yeah, it's been the first album in seven years. Uh... So it's been a while, but uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. So, um, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> uh, it's a typical God of Throne album, I would say. You know, it's got all the elements that you would expect from us. And uh, again, it's uh, it's a different one than the last one because we never do the same album twice. Right. It's a very dynamic album. It's got lots of stuff that's, you know fast and brutal but also a lot of stuff that's uh, like more mid-tempo right. based and uh, you know great stuff for live shows because our last one under the sign of the Iron Cross was uh, fast and aggressive all the time right. which makes it a bit more difficult to uh, absorb when you're when you're playing live you know as for the audience it's a bit sure. more boring <laughs> yeah because you can only break your neck once you know so uh, true <laughs> So, so we did an album that's a lot more dynamic, and uh, yeah, the response so far, is, so far is really good, and uh, it's been produced by Dan Svano, he did uh, all the Halo Bullets albums, he right. did the Asphyx albums, he's actually doing a lot of stuff, and right, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, great production, I would say. Which the new Asphyx is very good, we had the, we talked to uh, Martin not too long ago, so that was fun. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed In Coming Death. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, they're great friends, uh, friends of mine. So uh, yeah, I meet them quite a lot, and they're great people. Great band, anyways. Oh yeah. Now, have you worked with uh, Dan before? No, this was the first time for us. Awesome. And uh, it, it was yeah, it was really easy to work with that guy. You know, he had exactly the th- same things in mind as I did concerning the production and the balance and stuff like that. It's always, sound. always good, yeah. Yeah, there was uh, like an easy ride. He he complimented me about it afterwards. He said, man, this was so easy. We should do it more often. <laughs> right. so, so we will probably do that. And yeah, I didn't have to say anything. He just knew what I wanted, and uh, he had the same vision. And yeah, it was an easy job. And where did you guys record that new record? Um, we recorded the drums in Amsterdam. In the Split Second uh, Studios, uh, you probably never heard about it, but uh, <laughs> it's it's owned by the guys from Textures. Okay. You know that band? Yes, I do. And then, okay, and they own that studio, and, uh, and 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 the rest was actually recorded in my house. Oh wow! I have a big house, and it's suitable for a studio. And I never did that before. Well, we, we recorded demos and stuff at my place, but never a whole album. And we just rebuilt my house to a, to a studio. Nice. One of my friends owns a studio, so he helped me with it. And uh, so we did everything at my place at our time, you know, not like uh, the, the engineer saying at 10 o'clock in the morning, okay, we have to get started, because I really didn't feel like working like that anymore. So... When you're recording at home, you can just start whenever you want, you can finish whenever you want. And, uh, yeah, I think it sounds great. And, you know, uh, yeah, I think the feeling is great, the sound is good. So we have to do that more often, too. Sure. And we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, Yeah. And then I know you guys got a a German release party coming up for that to to promote the, the new record. Yeah. We have two German release shows uh, in the, the, on the release day itself and the day after. 
and then a week later we play a show in Belgium and two Dutch with these shows. So we have five in a row. And uh, yeah, it's the first time we play so many release shows, but right. yeah, there was a big demand for it, so we thought, okay, let's do it. It's fun. Awesome. Then you guys did, uh, in 2015, you played the 70,000 Tons of Metal. Have you guys played that one before, 2015? Yeah, we uh, we finished uh, there in 2012. Oh, yeah, the, the yeah. farewell thing, yeah. Yeah, then we went into the three-year break, and then uh, when I decided to, to play again, I thought it would be a great idea to start there where we finished. And they said, yeah, no problem, you're welcome, so... That's why we started again. And right. It was great because we, we played on the Thursday, on the first day. We were the first band on the big stage. Right. And when we entered the stage, the crowd was cheering towards us as if Iron Maiden came on stage. So that was <laughs> cool. oh, that's got to be awesome, yeah. Yeah, that was super. Even though they're all, you know, half-naked guys in bathing suits, still pretty awesome, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you can, also, you can just look at the girls and, and skip looking at them. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good one too. You know, oh. I have a question for you. Have you guys ever uh, have you all toured in the U.S. before? Yeah, we we've, we've done four U.S. tours so far. Okay, and who did you tour with when you were in the U.S.? Um, we toured with Cannibal Corpse. Awesome. And we toured uh, with uh, Overkill. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. And 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 Vader and uh, some other bands. And uh, we did. Uh, there was one festival tour. I don't remember the name. It was 2005. And there were some bands dropping out, and all of a sudden we were the headlining band. That was kind of strange. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, a, it was a great tour, too. And then we did another tour. So, yeah, four in total. And, uh, yeah, the U.S., to me, is great. I mean, maybe to you there's many things wrong in your country, but for <laughs> right. us as musicians, it's really great to tour the U.S. Oh, we loved it. We loved to have the... Uh get visited by real metal bands because there's so much shit from America that, <laughs> you know, it's it's more of a cult thing over here, so it's exciting for us when we get stuff that's uh, good. Yeah. Um, I can imagine. I mean, for us in Europe, it's like uh, many people are looking forward to see U.S. bands because that's more special to us. Right. And I, I, I guess it's the other way around when you when the U.S. Well, band goes to the States. Yeah, I mean, especially metal stuff because the... With that, all that deathcore dog shit, and the, you know the the mall metal top crap that we have that comes out over here, I I'm always excited when a band like God Dethroned or someone gets to come over and we actually get to see some. Like we just went and saw Creator recently; it was real exciting for us. I mean, the rest of the bill, you know, I'm just don't give a shit about. But you know, <laughs> to have Creator come over here and play was really cool. Get to see them headline, and same if you, yeah. you guys got to come over, and hopefully you guys will get to come over again. So yeah, we, we've been talking about it. Um... But you know we need a good package. I mean, I don't know about the states, but in Europe, in Europe, right now, if if you don't have a strong package, nobody will show up on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Right, right. So it's the same it here. Makes sense to, to go on tour then. You know, then it's better to just play weekend shows and do festivals. Right. Yeah. Because we have a ton of festivals in Europe, and you play for always like a, a pretty big crowd. Even the smaller festivals have like three to five thousand people. Oh yeah, which is still better than than going on tour and have nothing to do half the week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I, I always was curious if it was like that. I know over here we had had uh, Marco on from Our Penance, and he was saying that, you know, if they can't get on a good package, there's really no point in coming. You know. Yeah, th th I think many bands say the same nowadays. I mean, uh, it just doesn't make sense anymore. There's too many releases, too many tours. So the fans don't have the money to go to all the shows. Right. But if the package is strong enough, then it doesn't matter anymore. Then all of a sudden, it will be good. Right. It's all about so, value, too. You know, you're seeing, you know, yeah. um, versus just going to see one band, you're seeing, you know, a couple bands or three bands out of five that you want to see, you know. Adds yeah. more to your buck for doing that, but, you know. Of course, if God to Throne came, no matter if you guys were opening or what, we'd we'd, we'd oh, yeah, come definitely. see you. We we that's our big thing is we'll go support just one band. Like we went recently to see Immolation. I mean, the rest of the bill was shit, and we just wanted to see Immolation, you know. And they were like a support band, and you know, it's 
it's frustrating for doing the interviews and just but us just getting to enjoy a good live show. You know, a lot of the times the rest of the bill for for in America anyway is shit, and <laughs> you know, there's usually at least one band on the bill that we go end up spending the money so we can go see and hang out with them or whatever. But yeah, I guess when it's special enough, then then you can do that. But uh, will you do that every week? Just we, to see one we do. You know what? It, actually, it's funny that you asked that. In May, I'm going to be gone every just about every day in the month. And literally for for general like like destruction, the rest of that bill is shit. But I want to go see destruction, so we're going to go to that, and you know, just any yeah. anything that we can go to, to you know, and any I, I try to be open minded with stuff. But when you you know, like we have this, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, that summer slaughter tour package, and it's just kind of a, it's just a, most of it shit, and they'll put like two good bands in there, and then the rest of it's just a, kind of a mess. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 more for the younger guys and more older. So. Yeah, so it's you know I, I can't <laughs> do the deathcore stuff, and they try to throw the deathcore stuff with the death metal stuff, and I just don't, I just can't do it. <laughs> okay, but but is the is the crowd in general is it still good in the U.S.? You know, it's it's funny that you said that. I can actually give you a good example. Um, we had went to see Napalm Death, and everybody left after Black Dahlia murder because it was a bunch of kids. So it's like maybe. 50 of us standing in there watching Napalm Death, and I'm like, why the hell are you not watching Napalm Death? So, so yeah, it, it very much is. I think you have people, it depends people for, show yeah. up to, to see one band, and then you've got the other crowd that's there to see the other band. It's very, it's really weird. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that in Europe or not, if they're kind of a... Snobby crowd. A mixed crowd where they don't just watch everything. I mean, I don't know. No, over here it's more like uh, people skip the first three bands or something. Right, <laughs> they, you know, they just show up later. Night, when you have like five bands playing a show, then people will will go to the show like when band three or band four is playing. Right, five, you know. Right. So I, I I think we should go back to the old days where you have like two bands on tour. Yeah. You go and go and see the show. Two bands is great. You, you feel good, you know. When I see five bands, I'm drunk and deaf. <laughs> you know, and then right. and probably there's like three of them I didn't like. <laughs> or something so sure. yeah usually when, when we do like album release shows we do like just one support band and it doesn't matter it's it's like basically sold out sold out shows anyway yeah. right so Which is awesome, we don't yeah. really need it but you know usually the promoter is always scared and things like okay we need more bands otherwise we don't sell out the, the the venue yeah and they think variety you know brings in all kinds of people but you know it kind of hurts yeah, the general audience of what you're going for if you're just throwing on stuff to get certain kinds of people. You yeah, know. The, those those people should pay attention because they should see that nobody's showing up early at night. Right. So what's the point in having so many bands in just one backstage room and then cramping forty people <coughs> there? You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, we agree with bullshit. you. It's it is. And it's <laughs> it's. I agree with you down to the two band thing because like we're like well, you can see two bands play full sets. You get like five bands. They play fifteen to. 20 minutes yeah. I mean what yeah. what is that it's like 4 or 5 songs I mean I don't know I, I yeah, want to see a band play a good bit it's longer you know? than, than, the, than, than the set they're playing right and I get you and know the, I get really into bands when I see them live you know usually we travel out of town to go to go you know a few hours to go to these shows and you know yeah. if my band I want to see is a support band because there's like five, you know four other bands on there that you know divide the time by 20 minutes it's like I don't know um, it's just yeah. important to me. I think it's a good idea, actually, to do the two, you know, the two band thing. But I don't know what the way, um, you know, the economies are now and the way traveling well, is you know, now. And there's there's one other aspect you should never forget because the the bigger bands they need all the support bands to pay. Yeah, that's Especially true. Especially when you go on tour with them. That's true. So, like the support bands, they they pay for the bus. Mm-hmm. And that's why they need so many support acts because they. Maybe they can't make enough money on the show itself, so sure. they need support acts to pay for all the costs. It's like a second guarantee, basically, besides the venues. Yeah. I guess. Well, it's it's weird. Like when when we went and saw the last thing we went and saw was Creator. I couldn't believe Obituary and Creator were sharing a bus. Like I'd never, I wouldn't imagine that, but they were. Yeah. Okay. You know, normally well, you would think each of them would have their own bus or their own rod or whatever, but I, I don't know. So. Yeah, but I guess it saves a shitload of money if you if you share a bus. Sure. <laughs> if you know each other and you get along really well, then it's no problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's that's good savings there, and then they can do the tour easier or whatever. But I, um, when you toured with Cannibal over here, um, what year was that? Oh, that's a long time ago. That was in two thousand. 
Oh, wow. So that's like they were touring, like, what was that, like, Bloodthirst? Is that Bloodthirst? I think so. Um, well, 2002 was uh, Gore Obsessed, I want to say. I think it's it would have been Bloodthirst, I think. Is that Bloodthirst or the album before that? That's amazing. I, I, I'm I, pretty sure I saw that tour. Now, whether I saw you... If you guys played Atlanta, then I saw you guys. Yeah, it was Bloodthirst. Yeah, we, yeah, we played Atlanta. Yeah. If you played Masquerade, yeah, then I saw you guys then. That's the only time that I got to see you guys. Because I was trying yeah. to... Cause I grew up there, and I'm trying to sit and look at what year that would have been. So, yeah. So that was the yeah. only time I got to see you guys. The other bands on the bill were Hate Eternal and, yep. and Diabolic. I was there. Oh, yep. man. I do remember okay. that. Yeah, actually, oh, that, that venue is actually gone now. Ah, it was a big place. Yeah, they actually, they it's still around. They're just in a different location. But uh, if you come back over and end up playing Masquerade, it's 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 not in the same spot. It's kind of sad because that but, venue, I saw so many shows in there growing up. It's been there since the 1800s. I mean, it's old textile mill haunted yeah. venue. That's why so many people like to play there. So you guys were ah. playing... Uh, touring Passchendaele then no 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 that's way before Passchendaele we, we were touring for Bloody Blasphemy then. oh uh I'm thinking why am I thinking 2009 <laughs> that's uh um yeah Bloody Blasphemy that's amazing yeah. awesome yeah. that's a long time ago man I'm getting old <laughs> tell me about it it's it's not it's just like ugh and you haven't lost it now this um I don't know if there's a fan thing or is what you guys actually collaborated and done. There's a actual World War One trilogy, and that's what yeah. this new record is is uh, finalizing for the lyrical mm-hmm. content. So yeah. uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, um, people always want to know why I started doing this because World War One is pretty much unknown, you know. I, mean, I love I love the World War One, World War Two shit. So I mean, that's always interested me. So. Yeah, but most bands, uh, their lyrics deal with World War II because sure. it's easy, easier for them. Oh, yeah. But but one of our former guitar players, he lived in Hyper in Belgium. And oh, Hyper wow. was one of the cities on the forefront of the war. Mm-hmm. So when you go there, you see all the war memorial signs, you see the war graves. Every weekend, the whole city is full of English people who visit the graves of their relatives. Wow. So, and I went there a lot because, you know, Isaac De La Haye was a guitar player back then. He was a right. good friend of mine. So I would go there like almost every weekend. And I thought like, what the fuck are all these people doing here? <laughs> so then right. I found out why they were there and it was like totally interesting me. So I started digging into its history. Yeah. And I, I thought, okay, there's not, not that many bands who, who have songs about World War One, let alone a whole concept album about World War One. Yeah. So that's what we did. And the, the response on that album was so good that I thought, okay, let's do another one. So then we did Under the Sign of the Iron Cross. The album's nasty. It's one. fucking awesome. Yeah. Love that And show. then I thought, okay, let's make it a trilogy because that makes sense, right? Right. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, then we <coughs> for three years, but it was the only logical thing to do, to just finish the trilogy. Sure. And uh, yeah, that's basically what we did. I found some new topics and... Uh, it was actually quite hard to write another album about World War One. Sure. I wrote about 20 to 25 songs about that album. And uh, I was actually happy. I, I finished the last lyrics you know, because it was getting kind of hard. Right. But, you know, I think it turned out quite well. And what do you gain the inspiration from this time around that you didn't last time? Um... Well, I saw a documentary about uh, the Russian Tsar. You know, uh, Russia still had a Tsar during World War One. Right, and he got and assassinated or whatever. Yeah, he got assassinated. So, actually, it's the time that the communists took over in Russia. Right. So, I wrote a song about that. Awesome. Um, there's um, the biggest man-made explosion before the Trinity bomb in Nevada in mm. World War Two. Biggest man-made explosion was happening around Iver in Belgium during World War One. Right. You have to imagine that they blew up a hill, and uh, <laughs> in, even in London they could feel the blast. And London is like I don't know, really far away from there. Yeah. So <coughs> something special, you know. It was. Oh, yeah. It never happened before. So you know that, that those topics. I used those topics to write sure. songs about this time. Awesome. Yeah, because yeah. compared to World War II, I mean, sure, there was, you know, 
ten times the amount, you know, triple the amount of deaths or whatever. But when you think about World War One, it's it's a lot more brutal in the content of it, as far yeah. as being you know being a death metal band and trying to write something about war because you had the trench warfare and the you know the mustard gas and all that crazy stuff going on. I mean, it was very um, it was very brutal yeah. war, and it's known it was, for that, you know. Yeah, so. it was a really sick war, especially with all the the, the mustard gas and stuff yeah. like that, and being stuck in a trench for four years. Yeah, it's eat, eating alive by rats and, and swimming <laughs> in mud all day long. I yeah, mean, it's, it's a death metal war for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and we're doing uh, three videos for the new album. Oh wow! Okay. We're just uh, finishing the last one right now. We're we're doing the final edits in the in the video, and it will be released by Metal Blade next week, Tuesday. Awesome! awesome. Well, you heard it on here, the guys. Of April. Be on the lookout for that new God Dethroned. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, music it's video. for the song on the wrong side of the wire. That sounds and, pretty awesome uh, already. Yeah, we, we we put a lot of World War One footage in it as well, so it's um, it fits very well to the concept, of course. Awesome. And. And then I think a week and a half later, we'll have the second video, and then by the end of April, we will be uh, released the third one. Wow, awesome! A week before the album will be released. You're getting so, them right out there. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean we've we've been away for seven years, so we thought like, okay, what can <laughs> we do to to get some attention back? That, that'll I do mean, it. Not, not that we can complain. I mean, if if you look at the amount of people that come to our shows nowadays, it's really good. But still, you know, it's. Um, we want the people in the U.S. to know about it too, and there's so many bands and releases nowadays. We thought if we do like three videos in the month before the album release, then it's pretty hard not to not to know about it. I guess. Oh yeah, I agree with that. I, uh, Creator did that, and that actually got me really excited for the new record. So uh, they pump stuff out pretty quick. So I think a lot of bands are doing that now, and it, it's really working. It's a better way to get people immersed in the record before it even comes out. You know. Um, I mean, we can't do it like Metallica did, like doing the whole album in <laughs> yeah. one day. Yeah, you know. But that didn't really but save I the think record. Doing three is, is not bad either. Right? Yeah, I I think that's perfect. You know, and you ah. do it you do it pretty consistently, and uh, that'll get the hype going, and I think people yeah. will be ready for it, and we'll definitely uh, promote the shit out of that as well. Yeah, so we'll have those on our page for you. Okay. Cool. Yeah, of course. Um, and do you mind? I know we're kind of backtracking here, and hopefully we can do this real quick. Do you mind just kind of a brief history of how God to Throne came about? Yeah, well, it's a long time ago. We founded in 1990. Um, you know, I was inspired by bands like Entombed and Dismember and Morbid Angel. Okay. Ball Thrower. And uh, so we did a demo in 91, our first album in 92. And then we also had a break for two years, and then we signed to Metal Blade. They did uh, the Grand Grimoire album in 96, 97 in the U.S. And then, um, yeah, that, that, that's when everything went big, because uh, they put us on big tours, especially in Europe. Like, uh, I don't know if, if you heard about it, the No Mercy festivals. I think so, like, yeah. It was, was it like the first festival tour in Europe? I think I remember like, seeing Metal that, bands yeah. only. You know, we toured with Cannibal Corpse, Obituary, Marduk, Immortal, uh, Angel Corpse, and us. It was six bands on wow. one tour. That was something that, was, that never happened before. That's awesome. It's a hell of a so lineup, we were too. part of that. Yeah. It was really good. Then we did a Bloody Blasphemy album, and then we did our first U.S. tour with Cannibal Corpse. We played Japan for the first time. Awesome. We did a lot of uh, European tours. We did, like, the big festivals like Wacken. And uh, Dynamo Festival and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the open air stuff. Yeah, really, the big open airs of, the, of that day. And uh, yeah, well, and then we did um, the Ravenous album. We had Tony Laureano on drums, who played for Nile. Awesome. And um, well, actually, since since then, it's been touring and recording and touring and recording and touring. Right. Until now, so. And yeah, like I said before, now we have to have the right package, otherwise it's better to just do weekend shows and festivals. It's understandable. uh, You know, it makes more sense. Definitely, definitely. Did you, and just real quick, if you want to talk about what what uh, the hiatus between now and the new record. 
I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, why you uh, went on hiatus with uh, God to Throne and then... Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I needed some time for myself. Uh, I, had to, I had a few issues to deal with. And, uh, you know, I guess I was fed up with the whole touring recording thing. Uh-huh. And uh, so at that time, I wasn't sure if I needed a break or if I just wanted to quit. And uh, I knew if I would just take a break, then people would keep on bugging me about new tours and new albums and shit. Right, right that's understandable. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, so I decided to quit. And then, then the guy who signed us in Europe for Metal Blade, he died. Oh, my God. Um, he, he, he moved away from Metal Blade in the meantime. He went to the Summer Breeze Festival and made that really big. Uh -huh. he, was a, he was a good friend. And then he died of a brain tumor. Jeez, that's awful. And then I went to his funeral, and there, that's where I met the guys of Amon Amarth again. Uh, you know, the guys from Nuclear Blast and Metal Blade and all, many other bands and stuff. And at that day, I realized how much I missed it. You know, I really missed seeing all those people. And I thought, like, fucking hell, I just have to get my band back together and get right. it out on the road again. And it's weird so how that's it what is. I did. It's, exci it's exciting... Uh, to to have you back, I think it's really cool, and that's, I think that's inspiring, honestly, right there, just to, to you know, to get you back where you were uh, ready to come back and and uh, and deliver your uh, material again. I think it's awesome. Yeah, it is. I mean, I was surprised myself. You know, I really thought at that time, okay, this is it for me. I I had enough. And that day, when I saw all those people again, I was like, fucking hell, these are, this is my family. You know, this is right. the people I. I hang out with these other bands I tour with. I I just want to go on again, and I I've, I've never regretted it for a single moment. I mean, it's been awesome ever since. I just needed a break. That was all, and I didn't know that at the time. Right. Well, that's understandable. I mean, you, and you know, when you have the new record out, and you be back out there again, and I I think that hell, that's in, that's inspiring to me. That's yeah, very powerful, man. It we, is. That's, we we thank you also as fans for you know. Um, well, I thank you. Definitely coming back and, and, and delivering a new record, especially after that, you know, being kind yeah. of inspired yourself. So I think this record um, would mean a lot. I, I know it means a lot to you to put it out, and it means a lot to us that you were able to do so. So we, we thank you. Yeah, I think well, that's awesome. And I thank you because uh, I, we need guys like you and, and all our fans just to be able to go on. I mean, right. You know, the, the biggest fear I have right now is that nobody's interested in the band anymore. Well, I think this yeah. is a, a pretty good age uh, with what's going on. You know, us as U.S. fans, too, what, what's going on in our country right now, what's going on all over the world. Death metal is a very important genre of music. Uh, people are pissed off and aggressive, and they need something to, to relate to. And whether it's about yeah. war or not, I mean, you know, uh, I think this yeah. is a pretty good time to have an album or have a new God Dethroned record come out. It's just... I think it's perfect timing. Yeah, well, I hope so. And I mean, <laughs> I can't complain because what I've seen at the shows here in Europe, there's been a lot of people. Nobody has, has forgotten about us so far. And I just hope that a new album will also be picked up. Oh, yeah. You know, because you hear about declining album sales everywhere. So oh, I yeah. have no idea what to expect. Well, luckily, we, we still buy physical media, so we'll be picking that up for sure. Yeah, we don't do digital. We still buy the CDs and the vinyl and stuff. So I like having yeah. the artwork and the lyrics, you know, at my disposal. So I don't have to look anything up. I can just grab it yeah. when I want to hear it. You know. Yeah, same here. And I think the metal scene is is, is a it's is very typical. It's a typical scene for having the physical products. Still, sure. You know, compared to other types of music. So that's that's good. And also vinyl has has come back again. Like yeah quite quite big again you know definitely and even cassettes too which is weird cassettes are coming back because i have a cassette player because my car is old so i have a cassette player and i'm just gonna leave it a cassette player <laughs> just buy cassettes yeah. you know try and find all st stuff i still have a lot of cassettes at home i still have hundreds of cassettes it's still awesome. from 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 the early 90s i still have them they all still function it's awesome yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's cool to have stuff like that. Um, another thing we do on our podcast, uh, we're into horror movies. Uh, are you a horror fan at all? A little bit. Uh, what was maybe the first horror film you saw that you really dug when you were a kid? Uh, I remember the movie. I don't remember the name. It's stupid because it's a really, really well-known uh, movie. We can probably uh, tell you what it is if you tell us what happens in it. Yeah, it's it's the um, 
it's the people who end up in a shed in the woods and then uh, they kill each other with a chainsaw and everybody who goes to sleep turns into a monster that sounds fucking crazy I don't know if I've seen that and there's been <laughs> sequels of it and they were all shit but the first one was excellent <laughs> uh not Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, no, I, I've got that one too. It's also a great movie, but I meant another one. It's a really well-known one. It's one of the really old ones, hmm. and I don't remember. It's not Last Saturday House on the Left. I don't remember, man. Huh? Well, maybe maybe something else that you so you like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love that the original one. I think that movie's amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, are you an Evil Dead fan at all? Uh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that the one with the chainsaw and the people falling? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's yeah. Evil Dead. Evil Dead Two. It would be then with the chainsaw. No, I think. No, I think it was Evil Dead. I think it must have been Evil Dead. The first Evil Dead. Were there yeah, in the, the first uh, one? The first one. Yeah. Here's you a fun. <laughs> here's you a fun story about Evil Dead. Uh, where Corey and I used to live, about an hour and a half away, is where they actually shot the film. Oh yeah. Yeah, because they, they actually shot it in Tennessee. In, okay. in the uh, cabin, which is now, uh, it got vandalized and it's all overgrown. Cause you can still kind of get to where the cabin is, but all that's left is like the chimney because people kind of, uh, you know. All right. But that kind so of it sucks. Wasn't, it wasn't like a movie set. It was like an actual cabin. Yes, you yeah, yeah, shot it cabin. low budget out in the middle of a little hick town about an hour and a half from where my parents live. <laughs> okay. In Tennessee. It's just really weird. but uh, Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, do you, do you like uh, do you have you watched any newer horror stuff, or do you do you prefer watching older stuff like we do? Or um, you know, I, I watch a little bit of everything. I'm not I'm not a big fan of a certain genre, to be honest. Just certain, just whatever you like. Yeah, whatever whatever comes along, I guess. Cool. It's usually my girlfriend who knows about all the movies. <laughs> well, that's cool. And then she says, "We have to watch this one." And then she always pretends she hasn't seen it, but she's seen everything. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, I used to be that way too. Like, no, I totally <coughs> haven't seen this before. That's funny. <laughs> used to get yeah, them enticed uh, the whole thing. But I, I like movies in general. But I, I'm not. I'm not like a, a fan of only like horror movies or action movies. I like everything. Cool. Oh, yeah, we love you know cheesy '80s comedies and horror movies. I mean, whatever is good is good. You know. Um, yeah. But horror. Make- at least for us, with this is primarily what we cover. So, uh, what um, huh. do you have any like war movies you really like that help you write and stuff like that? Do you are you into the war stuff? Yeah, I, I watch the war movies, but they are never. You know, they're usually, especially the World War One war movies. Right. They're always like love stories. You know, they always talk yeah. about a man and a woman, and they hook up, and, and then the war is a little bit around that. Yeah, there's a, can, can, there's, there's a Canadian movie called Passchendaele. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen Passchendaele. Yeah, so it's it's a good movie, but it's not like a real war movie, right? You know, and some people think it's a shit movie because of all the love stories <laughs> there. But you know, it, I, I, in a way, it makes sense, I guess. You know, there's gotta be some humanity time, to it. You know, like World War One and stuff. And then uh, there's some good movies about uh, about the Red Baron. Yeah. And uh, they are pretty cool. I guess my favorite. Okay. I'm trying to think. What is the name? Of it? Do you like the Great Escape with Steve McQueen? Uh, I've probably seen it. James you Garner, Char- uh, Charles Bronson. It's got like a hell of a cast. It's like, yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but I'm really bad with names and stuff. Right. So it's, it's real long. long. That movie's like three and a half hours long. It's epic. I love it. And then of course at the end of it. Steve McQueen's on the motorcycle getting out of there. It's pretty awesome. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of good movies. And I've probably seen all of them, but when <laughs> somebody asks me about the title, I'm, I'm always like, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> if you want a good one, this isn't a war movie, but it relates to it. It's an 80s like slasher movie. You watch The Prowler, because it's a World War II veteran guy mm. gets revenge on his... Ex girlfriend and her boyfriend, so that's a pretty good one. A little okay. little war tied to it, you know. It's an eighties 
Slash he's even dressed in the in the fatigues while he's killing. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. You know? Okay. Almost like zombified something. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's nice. definitely good. Yeah. Old school eighties gore stuff, so that'd be if you're interested oh. in that, definitely check it out. Okay. The Prowler. The Prowler. Yep. Yeah, okay. Eighty one. I'll remember. And if you've never 81. seen it, if you want mm-hmm. something which I think kind of goes along with kind of what you do, the uh, my favorite zombie film, this movie called Zombie Lake, and oh. uh, it's really cool because the, all the Nazis, it's like these dead Nazi zombies that are in it. It's really cool. Yeah, that's a pretty new one, isn't it? Actually, it's from oh, 19, it's from nineteen eighty. Oh, that's oh, okay. Then they then they did a remake of that one, probably. Because I think so. Yeah, well, they did. Uh, sounds familiar. They did a uh, Dead Snow. Oh, yeah. Which is um, Nazi zombies, but it's actually a, a Dutch movie, which is cool. The, the whole thing's in Dutch, but it's it's like a horror comedy almost, but it's very it's very gory and it's very funny, and uh, the zombies yeah. look really fucking cool in it. You know, they find, like, Nazi gold or treasure, and then it summons these yeah. Nazi zombies, and it gets pretty, pretty insane near the end of oh. it, so <laughs> very bloody. Oh. So that's something to check out if you haven't yet. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. But uh, anything else you'd like to plug before we let you go? Um... Uh, well, you know what I always say? People should check out a new album, you know? I guess when you're a fan, this album should be good. good. And if you're not a fan, then hopefully it's good enough. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and hopefully we'll come over to the U.S. this year. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Um, the booking agent has, has contacted me about it already. Awesome. And we have to we have to go into detail about it, but we'll see what happens. But it would be great. I mean, I like touring the states a lot. You make it over, we'll buy you buy you some beer and we'll hang out. Yeah, yeah. If you uh, maybe you could uh, let us know or Metal Blade know that you want to come to a show, maybe we can put you on a guest list or something. Yeah, that, that would be amazing, man. That. that would be really cool. We'd love to actually get yeah. to meet you and stuff, and and uh, appreciate you doing this. And uh, New God to Throne comes out. May 5th, which is yep. Cinco de Mayo, so it's a double party. You can yep. pick up the new God so, of the Throne and celebrate that. Yeah, definitely. Well, let me know if you're if we're coming by. You know, just uh, send us an email or contact uh, Metal Blade about it, and uh, we'll put you on the guest list, man. Sure, that'd be that'd amazing. be amazing. It really would. This is Henry from God Dethroned, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Awesome, man. Hey, thank good? you for doing this. We awesome. really appreciate. Hopefully, we didn't keep you too long. Yeah, I guess the next one is already waiting for me, the next interview, so. <laughs> well, yeah, it's been fun, man. We've, We've had uh, a blast. Thank you. Hopefully we'll get to see you soon. Yeah, it was a great interview, so thank you very much. No problem, man. And May 5th, The World of Blaze, New God Dethroned, comes out via Metal Blade Records. You can pick that shit up. And also, next Tuesday, you can watch uh, the first music video off the new record. So be on the lookout yeah. for that as well. On the, on the wrong side of the wire. On the That's wrong the side one. of the wire. And I can't wait. It sounds brutal already. Well, thank you so much, Henry. It's been an honor speaking with you, and uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you soon. All right, man. You're welcome, and see you around. All right, man. Cheers. All right. Cheers.